to at a later time. Thank you. Um, and also, this is a good opportunity to remind you all in parish leadership that if you've had an annual meeting and your leadership has changed, uh, please do make sure that your current leaders have access to this uh, meeting uh, so that we can make sure that everybody who uh, can be here at least has the information they need to be here. Uh, I bring greetings uh, and regrets from Bishop Ahrens. Bishop Ahrens uh, is on the team that reads uh, the general ordination exams. So that they are reading those exams uh, this week. So please hold her and all the readers and those who wrote the essays uh, in your prayers uh, this week. She sends her love and her regrets. Um, and with that, why don't we begin the the prayer and the readings for today or for this upcoming Sunday, which, of course, uh, is the uh, Feast of the Transfiguration. And you can join along and read with us uh, using the link in the chat. And I will begin with opening prayer. And then I have asked uh, Dean Rebecca Hatch to uh, join us to share the reading the first time. And then I'll invite us um, uh, to consider a question and then I'll read it a second time uh, and offer another prompt. Then we'll follow with the Lord's Prayer uh, with the Reverend Lisa Honeyman reading in French and Dylan Mello uh, leading us in Spanish. So why don't we begin with some prayer. I'm also mindful, um, although it seems like we could say this every time we are together, that um, there's a lot happening in the world uh, and it is a hard place and our hearts are breaking um, for lots of folks uh, in just the last few weeks with uh, more than uh, a couple of mass shootings. And of course, the most uh, recent one this week at Michigan State. Um, the toll in Syria and Turkey is now at 40,000, uh, and they don't even know how many folks are missing and still uh, living in the in the wake of uh, Tyree Nichols and, and that video and his murder. And so there's just, there's so much on our hearts. Um, and because our God is a God of compassion and a God of love, and when we join with God in God's compassion and love, it causes our hearts to break. So uh, I am grateful for this time to be with you all. Uh, we are given opportunities like this to be together, to support and to love one another, and hopefully to discern how it is God will move us into action uh, to make this world the place that God longs for it to be. So I'm grateful for your willingness to be a part of this gathered community this morning. Let us pray. O oh God, who before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed his glory upon the holy mountain, grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And now, uh, Rebecca, if you would unmute. And as you all hear the passage being read this first time, what word or phrase is God calling you to notice? And it would be wonderful if you would share that word or phrase that God is calling you to notice uh, in the chat as uh, Dean Hatch reads it. Six days after Peter had acknowledged Jesus as the Christ, the son of the living God, Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them and his face shone like the sun and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with them. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings for three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, 
And from the cloud, a voice said, This is my son, the beloved. With him, I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, Tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. What word or phrase is God calling you to notice? Six days after Peter had acknowledged Jesus as the Christ, the son of the living God, Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them and his face shone like the sun and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them. And from the cloud, a voice said, this is my son, the beloved. With him, I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. And they were coming down the mountain. Jesus ordered them, Tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. What might God be calling you to try on at this time as you hear that reading? What might God be asking you to try on? Thank you. 
And now if uh, Lisa and Dylan, if you would unmute yourselves and we can pray together in whatever is the language of your heart, uh, the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Our Father. Thank you, Dylan, and thank you, Lisa, and thank you, everyone. As always, such a rich conversation happening in chat. If you are joining us by phone, I encourage you to um, find the recording of this. And um, for those of you preparing sermons on Sunday, this is always a great gift um, of communal invitation. Uh, so now is the point uh, in our gathering where it is uh, whatever is on your hearts and minds um, if you have announcements to make, we'll ask you to hold off on that until later in our call. This is really uh, our opportunity to ask questions of clarification or just whatever's on your heart or mind or what, what are you wondering about? What would you like to hear from uh, me or other members of the community about? Whatever you bring into the space is, is what we want to dedicate this next section of time with. Any thoughts or or questions on your mind? Randy, good morning. If you would just introduce yourself and your congregation, that would be great. Good morning, <clears throat> Bishop and everyone. My name is Randy DePentima. I am the senior warden at St. Andrew's Kent. And we are um, hoping to launch a search process right now for a rector, um, waiting for materials from the um, office to get us going. Um, and I'm, I'm dealing with a lot of things in terms of just trying to keep the parish together and, and thinking um, optimistically about the future. One issue that has just come up is, is returning to the Common Cup and I just wondered um, whether you had anyone has a suggestion on how to figure out if this is the right time to do that. We have been using the little uh, glass um, tray of vials. Um, anyway, that's just <laughs> just mm -hmm. one of the things so on my plate. So yeah, thanks. yeah. And first of all, Renee, let me say thank you. This, as I hope you've heard me say before, this is. Uh, a challenging time to be a lay leader and a warden in a parish. And when your parish is in transition, that's a whole other layer of complexity. Um, so thank you for your leadership in this time. I do want to encourage you to maybe find and connect with other wardens who have uh, walked with their congregations through this time, uh, because I find that the experts on these topics are the folks who have walked most closely in this time and can speak to it um, from the parish perspective and what it's like to be a lay leader um, with the parish in transition. So if you are a lay leader uh, who might be willing to have a conversation, if that's of interest to you, Randy, or to anyone cool. else, uh, you can put your name uh, in the chat uh, and maybe folks can connect um, and so we can build a, a network of support for one another. Um, I think in my brief experience uh, going from parish to parish here in ECCT, I've seen just about every option. Um, and there are plenty of congregations that have returned to the Common Cup. Um, and uh, that includes options for drinking from the Common Cup. Uh, in some places, uh, folks are receiving the bread and then uh, in tincting, in other places, the congregation is letting the person distributing the bread know that they'd like it to be in tinct, so that that person is in tincting and placing it uh, in the hand. 
and still other places are uh, continuing to use individual uh, vessels or still receiving in one kind. Um, I think uh, it's this is one more layer of responsibility at the local congregation, and I know it would be great if we could make some scientific pronouncement. Uh, what I have learned over the last three years is that I am not a scientist, um, and I leave that to those who are, are more well versed in that. And I think for 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 my understanding, the best way forward is for discernment about this topic in your local community, including um, uh, local health officials. So you, when Matt uh, shares the COVID. Uh, numbers, you'll see that it really can vary greatly um, from community to community to community. And of course, COVID is only one of the things that some communities are uh, negotiating health wise right now. So it is often the best way forward to figure out what makes the most sense in your local community based on science. And and that's a hard thing to communicate in a, in a community when uh, sometimes fear or um, practice, you know, we've been doing this for three years now. This is now ancient tradition in the church. It's the way we've always done it for some folks. Um, and so those are all complicated uh, layers, but there's no uh, diocesan policy that says you cannot do any one of those um, options that I, that I laid out before you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Rich, good morning. Welcome. Good morning, Bishop. Um, I uh, just wanted to extend to Randy and to all wardens. Uh, there is a Episcopal Warden Facebook group that uh, Carolyn Clement has been kind enough to set up. And, you know, I'm just finishing my second year and I still have plenty of questions. And I pose those uh, to the group, I get their considered answers, and then I can move forward. So this might be a really good question for uh, for that group, and uh, encourage all wardens to uh, to to join this group. Great, thank you, Rich. I'm so glad to hear that that exists. Uh, a couple of notions uh, in the chat. One is to make sure uh, about an ECCT guide. Um, the Commons Companion is an excellent resource, and if you find it on the website, every hyperlink actually takes you directly where um, you want to be. And Marjay, I appreciate your uh, helpful comment. Just a reminder that in the Episcopal Church, we believe that receiving in one kind is receiving in all kinds. It's sufficient, so uh, folks can continue to have the option to not receive the cup. Um, and to come forward for a blessing as well. So thank you for that. St. Michael's Parish, the entire congregation is with us this morning. Oh, well, that must be me, Ian Montgomery, <laughs> uh, Litfield. Pardon me, I, I don't know what my iPad does. Uh, mysterious things, they're wonders to perform. Um, I wanted to offer our, our recently passed senior warden, Denise Buckwell, would be happy, I know. She very successfully negotiated the period after Bevan Stanley left St. Michael's through the time uh, that I arrived through to our annual meeting. And I think she'd be happy to share her experience and best practices with anyone in that situation. I gave her email to Randy through DM. Um, and I would also share the practice that was there when I arrived. I had been in Old Greenwich and we'd been using one kind and we didn't feel a need to move forward from that. Or, and we had some real caution amongst a number of members. Um, and so we didn't. When I arrived in Litchfield, it was sort of a, a, a receiver's choice. And I embraced that, which is simply that the chalice bearer has, has the common cup. You can let it pass, instinct, or drink. It's your choice based on your comfort level. Great, thank you. Receiver's choice not to be confused with receptionism. Just Correct, sir. Another morning. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Uh, oh, and uh, helpful, more helpful comments. And also, there is a great guide that uh, Rachel has put in the chat, Jennifer Bassett of St. John's North Haven, which would basically 
goes through everything a parish has to have on its radar in the course of a program year. And it gives um, green and yellow and red, depending on how close you are to that being due um, in the year. So it's a wonderful uh, planning guide. And uh, I know Bishop Laura and I both bring it with us on visitations. Uh, but if you want a copy of it, Rachel has graciously agreed to send it to you if you email her using the email address in the chat. Thank you, Rachel, for that. Thank you. Other questions or comments for our gathered time this morning? We've had a robust season of ordinations, uh, which has been terrific. Last night was, um, I guess, our, our our final episode in ordination season 2023 uh, with uh, ordination of Meg Stapleton Smith. So thank you to everyone who's been a part of all of those uh, folks formation, uh, the Commission on Ministry and your faithful and fine work. Um, uh, and it's been a, a wonderful season of celebration. Olive, good morning, welcome. I think you're still on mute. Good morning, you? everyone. My name is Olive Grant. I'm a junior warden at St. John's Episcopal Church in Stamford, Connecticut. I just would like to know who is our new um, Southwestern um, region leader? And when is our next meeting, or did I miss one? Oh, Olive, and thank you so much. What a great, great, um, that's right, set me up for a, a slam over the over the net. Is Deb, I think I saw Deb come in this morning. Deb, do you want to unmute and introduce yourself? I'd love to. Good morning. Hi, Olive, it's nice to meet you. Um, I'm Deb Tickle. I'm new to the North and Southwest regions and reaching out as fast as I can to each church in succession. So. If you want to send me an email, I'll put it in the chat and we'll bump you to the top of the list, which is an invitation for anybody else also. And that list gets bigger and bigger. <laughs> Great. Welcome. I'm so glad you're here and, and on the ground. Thank you. Do you have any information about a convocation for Southwest? Uh, at this moment in time, I do not, as we're looking to... Um, revamp and, and enhance the leadership team in the Southwest. So particularly Great. anybody in the Southwest who's interested, please send me an email. Great. I think I heard Olive volunteer. I wasn't, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> twice, twice, in fact. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Deb, and, and welcome again. Thank you. Not hearing any Thank other, you. oh, yes, Merrick, good morning. Good morning. This is Merrick Sabrisky from Christ Church. I'm sorry, can't find the uh, raise hand signal on my Zoom. I may have had it updated and not be able to navigate. Anyway, uh, I'm the rector of Christ Church in Greenwich, and we're fortunate next year to be celebrating our 275th anniversary. And if anyone celebrated a big anniversary, I'd love to hear your thoughts about how you did it. I've heard of everything from, you know, guest preachers, guest speakers, um, having a historic service that would have been similar mm. to the time they held back, you know, in 1749, uh, time capsules and uh, having a history at commission of the church. But love to hear any ideas people have that were creative or fun or meaningful to your parish, if anyone has done that recently. For, you know, it could be 50 years or 100 years, whatever. That's wonderful. Thank you, Mark. If you if you did a historic uh, anniversary celebration, if you could just put that in the chat so uh, Merrick can be in touch, that would be great. And um, if you get a number of resources, Merrick, can I ask you to forward that to us here so that we can have a resource for others who might have the same question in the future? We'd be glad to do that. Right. Yeah, I had a great, um, a, a quick side story that when I was at a gathering of bishops, um, I had a 250th anniversary celebration that I was preparing to attend the following weekend. And so we were all talking about what our weekends were. And, and one of the bishops said, what are you doing this weekend, Bishop? And I said, oh, I'm going to a 250th anniversary. 
and everybody's jaws just dropped and they said my diocese isn't even 250 years old right so we we are we are spoiled um in this part with the 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 incredible uh legacy uh and uh gifts of generations um as well as responsibilities and uh stories to be told and and truths to be untacked and uh, unpacked in this place so um other questions great i am going to ask matt to offer us matt's stats this morning if he may yes yeah, sorry just replying to a comment oh yeah <clears throat> thanks and i will all right here we go so we are looking at a uh map of where uh COVID is the most intense uh, and so we see the higher cases again are in the cities uh but last uh time we'd see this uh higher number in, in the legend be around somewhere in the hundreds hundred and tens and now the uh, highest number in this map is 78 cases uh either in new haven or bridgeport looking at hospitalizations uh, we see a continuing decline from our recent peak in january uh, we're down to 337 hospitalizations. That's down from 761. And also our uh, seven-day uh, positivity trend, uh, we are down to 7.46%, which is almost 10% uh, uh, lower than uh, a full 10% lower than we were back at that January 4th peak. Um, the numbers continue to go down, and that's good news. And uh, I would ask that we continue to keep each other safe and, and do thing what uh, do things which are right for you and your community. And uh, that is it. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. And we are continuing to um, ask questions as as we move into this yet another phase of uh, moving through uh, the pandemic, um, even sharing. Uh, COVID numbers on an every other week basis and what role that plays and how helpful that is to folks. We are continuing to wonder that. And uh, if we change that practice, we will, of course, uh, let you know. But we want to be helpful. Um, and if the information is useful, we are glad to continue uh, to provide it. Um, announcements for the good of the whole. I have a couple I'd like to share with you. One is, I think it's always um, exciting uh, to hear how folks from our local context are serving the larger church. And those of you who are on the call at the beginning heard me say that Bishop Ahrens, uh, in part of her ministry, she serves uh, as a reader for the general ordination exams, which is why she's not with us this morning. This is the week where those um, exams are read, and she is our participant and a reader in that. So we hold her and all of those uh, folks in our prayers, and we thank Bishop Ahrens for that uh, ministry she offers to the larger church. I also want to let you know, in case you don't know, that um, Canon Runjit Matthews is currently in Ghana uh, with the ACC, the Anglican Consultative Council. Um, and I just, I think that's such an incredible gift to ECCT to have one of our own uh, represent one of three people, I think, representing the Episcopal Church uh, to the ACC. Uh, so please do hold uh, Ken and Ranjit and uh, all those attending the Anglican Consultative Council uh, in your prayers um, at this time. And we thank Ranjit uh, for his um, service to the larger church. I am, ex I am excited, um, and I have been told by our Director of Human Resources that uh, I, I have to be limited in my excitement. Uh, we uh, have made an offer to our new uh, Minister of Hospitality and Welcome here at the Commons, um, the person who will be answering the door and the phone and providing uh, general uh, support and presence here at the Commons. Uh, the offer has been made and verbally accepted. Uh, and as soon as we have a signed letter of agreement, we can uh, we will announce that um, through all the usual channels, uh, letting you know who they are and how to be in touch with them. But we are really excited uh, to have this new position here at the Commons so that 
when you, wh however you're trying to reach us and whoever you're trying to reach, uh, we hope that you will have a, a human uh, incarnate presence uh, to be in, in contact with. Only limited excitement because I can't say the name. That's the only reason my excitement is limited. I really wanted to go there this morning, but HR is, is doing their job. Other announcements for the good of the church. Ken Rosado, good morning. Good morning, Bishop. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Rosanna Rosado, your Canon Commission Finance and Operations. I'm here to invite you to our last orientation, parochial report orientation, being held today from 2 to 3 p.m. Um, I, I will place the link on the chat so that you can register if you have not already done so. We invite you to participate. There are some nuances uh, to the parochial report this year. Um, one is that the uh, parochial report is asking for some specific statistics. Um, and I'm also gonna place on the chat um, the Reverend Kate Wesh from St. John's Ethics. Um, their parish created a job form link asking uh, several questions um, so that they can obtain that information. It's free, it's easy, and it's part of um, uh, the process that we would need for this year's parochial report. Um, I also um, will be placing in the chat, um, we have a new survey that is part of the parochial report, and this is an ECCT convention um, mandate, which is the care of creation, and there's a job form for that as well. Um, so I invite you to join us uh, this, this afternoon if you are able. Um, it'll be an hour of great Q&A, and um, just uh, 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 learning through the parochial report and its various nuances. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you. Um, and I'm so grateful to uh, Kate Wesh for that um, Google Form. We are trying in every way we can to figure out how to streamline processes and uh, make all of these things easier for folks. It also reminds me that we are also putting together an online version of the pre-visitation worksheet, uh, which will have drop-down menus uh, for all of the various questions just to see if we can make that um, easier and less cumbersome as well. So. Uh, those of you with visitations um, in the near future, look for a new um, job form online uh, uh, form to be filled out. And thank you for that. Bonnie, good morning. Good morning, Bonnie Matthews, deacon serving at our cathedral. Um, I have two announcements. The first announcement was in ECCT e news the last time it was published. And I just want to remind people that there is an invitation from the Deacons Council and the Deacons to participate in um, Lenten disciplines, whether they be um, championing for, for justice or for, for food, for homelessness, um, in your areas, in your networks, um, in your faith communities. To, to do some, to think about it and do something. And then after Easter, we would love to hear you tell your story of, of what was done, um, whether it's to serve a food pantry, to um, provide hygiene products, um, to champion for homelessness, uh, whatever it is, but we wanna hear about it. Um, we want that good news to, to go out to everyone. And my second announcement is that the North Central Region, um, our cathedral has once again invited North Central Region to collect hygiene products throughout Lent. Um, we're looking for hopefully people to purchase one product a week for each week of um, Lent. And if you shop wisely at certain stores, you can get um, four items for the price of one if you go shop at, a, a, at another store. So please consider that there will be another um, North Central and uh, Cathedral posting on the hygiene products. And those will go to benefit Capital Community College's food pantry. Thank you so much, Bonnie. Thank you for the ministry. I want to let you know that um, we have the confirmation uh, schedule uh, in a document that will be linked in the chat, I believe. There it is. Thank you, Matt. 
Um, there are six confirm regional confirmations uh, being offered this spring, uh, two at the Easter Vigil, one at Christ Church Cathedral and one at um, Episcopal Church at Yale. And then we have one at Camp Washington, uh, St. Andrews in Madison, Christ and Holy Trinity in Westport, and St. Mark's uh, Episcopal in New Canaan. So there are six regional opportunities for confirmations in, um, in addition to confirmations at the local congregation at, um, at a visitation. So this is, of course, confirmations are uh, a hot topic uh, in every uh, diocese, and particularly when there's a new bishop, lots of questions about how confirmation will stay the same or change, and it's an ongoing conversation. Uh, but for this season through the end of the program year, uh, the schedule as it has been released is the schedule that we will be following for confirmation in the diocese. Um, I also, a quick word uh, to, particularly to the clergy on the call this morning, which we are getting very close to sending out registration for clergy conference. But I do want to make sure that everybody has it on their uh, calendar. Clergy conference this year will be May 15th through the 17th. May 15th through the 17th at the Inn at Middletown. And we will be abundantly blessed by our keynote speaker, the Dr. Uh, Dr. Allison St. Louis. Uh, that If that name sounds familiar to you, um, it is because she is no stranger to ECCT. Uh, having served here at the cathedral for a time. Uh, Dr. St. Louis uh, is, uh, operates the Center for Healing and Hope. Uh, she's a licensed clinical psychologist, a spiritual director, affiliated faculty member at Virginia Theological Seminary, on the staff of Preaching Foundation, and she's really excited. She's put together uh, a great uh, proposal for an offering around uh, wellness and healing and hope. Um, and how we um, engage in our ministry uh, in, in new and refreshing ways. Um, the clergy conference planning team is hard at work offering uh, a, a wide or a range of activities for our three days together. Uh, so please do make sure you have that on your uh, calendar. Uh, we have a block of rooms uh, that you can go ahead uh, and uh, reserve. They are $149 a night for those of you who are going to stay. We will also be, and I think this is new, we'll be offering day rates. So if you want to commute um, or if you have another job or if you can't commit to the full three days, you'll be able to choose uh, a commuter rate for each uh, of the three days or all three days if you want. So Keep a, an eye out for that. That will be coming out um, shortly, I hope. Other announcements for the good of the church. We know, of course, that Lent starts next week with uh, Ash Wednesday. Hard to believe that we are there, uh, but we are. If you're Parish is um, offering uh, services or activities for either Shrove. I, I love to know where all the pancake suppers are. Um, so if you have information about Shrove Tuesday or Shrove Sunday uh, activities or Ash Wednesday, please do make sure that you um, put those on the ECCT social media pages so that folks in your area who might be looking for such an offering uh, might be able to find them. Tim, good morning and welcome. Thank you, Bishop, and good morning, everyone. Tim Hodap, your canon for mission advancement and coaching. And one more shout out for mark your calendars. I recognize there isn't a lot of information on the website yet, but within the next week, there shall be for spring training and gathering our 10th season of this. Together we learn, together we're sent. And Mary Foster Palmer, and I'll put a link to her website who for many years served as the uh, lead executive director of Gathering of Leaders, began an organization about four years ago, which took something of a hiatus during COVID and is at it strong again. Invite, Welcome to and Connect is a group of folks who work with parishes across the Episcopal Church to equip and empower 
individuals, congregations for evangelism, hospitality, and connections. And it's all focused on Matthew's go out and make disciples of all nations. And it's a, a wonderful process. And she's coming to be our plenary on April 29th. Uh, and we will find the venue. We're working our tails off to make that happen, as well as about 15 to 20 presentations that morning. And again, I'll put that detail into the um, chat in a moment. So April 29th will be our in-person with Mary Foster Palmer as our plenary. And the two weeks ahead of that, April 17th through April 27th, we'll do an online presentation of a variety of different uh, offerings from workshop presenters. 90 minutes, a couple of times for each workshop, morning, afternoon, evening. And as we've done before, it's everything from Vestry 101, 102, 103, and uh, finance in a parish, to faith formation, to conflict resolution, to how do I explore uh, the possibility of spiritual life in my life. Uh, lots and lots of presentations from our subject matter experts from across ECCT. So April 17th through April 29th, spring training and gathering our 10th anniversary, and watch for more information very soon. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Both of these events, the Spring Training and Learning and Clergy Conference, we hope will be uh, real times of, of gathering and supporting and nourishing one another um, after many of us are feeling uh, strained and distanced and isolated. Um, so we are looking forward to these times of uh, renewal and and support so we hope everyone will put april 29th uh on your calendar and the two weeks before that and for clergy uh, i do hope to see you at clergy conference any other announcements for the good of the church well this has been uh yet another incredible gift Oh, Evelyn, there's the hand again. Hi, Evelyn Wheeler. This time I meant to raise my hand. <laughs> I was just <laughs> looking for it. <laughs> um, I also, things that are coming up, you don't have to have gone to Berkeley Divinity School to participate. They are embarking on a leadership for clergy um, seminar idea. Um, and there, it's called the Leader's Way. I've got the thing right here. <laughs> um, in June, and it's a six-day residential program. They have room for 12 people. They have scholarships for as many as eight. And um, it's, I don't have a specific program, but I was just told about it yesterday, so. It's, it's designed for people who have been clergy for a while and there's, still you know willing to learn or, or need to re, re regroup themselves a little bit how to you know, do our jobs better kind of thing i don't i don't really know yeah i can actually speak to that a little bit thank you okay. ellen i um one of the blessings of uh this role is that i get to serve on the board of trustees at berkeley at yale and so the uh the leader's way as it's called was uh sort of unveiled or um explained at our recent gathering and it really is um they're really trying to pay attention to the fact that um, uh, ordained ministry is lifelong formation uh, and that you don't graduate from your MDiv program fully formed, or at least I didn't. Um, so this is a great opportunity for those of you who are looking for a deeper dive and um, uh, a focused formation program. So I highly recommend it. I'm excited uh, to hear it. Are we able to, uh, Matt, did you post the confirmation schedule? If Can we post it again one more time? Somebody got bumped off and didn't see it in the chat. If we could just post it again, that would be great. Thank you so much. If there's no, oh, Linda, good morning. Good morning. Uh, Linda Spires, retired clergy uh, and doing supply in St. Matthew's Wilton right now. Um, I just wanted, this is not an announcement, it's a thank you to um, Reverend Tracy Johnson Russell and uh, 
Marie uh, Brown is on the call, who's a warden, and all the people of St. Monica's who hosted the Absalom Jones service on Sunday. It was really awesome. Yejide Peters' sermon was fantastic, and, uh, and we had lots of folks gathered. So just thanks to the folks of St. Monica's for opening their doors and welcoming us all. Amen. Thank you, Linda. It was a wonderful event. If there are no other announcements, um, I offer a prayer uh, from the Anti-Racism Prayer Book. Um, and I ask you to join me in prayer. The Lord be with you. God is with you. Let us pray. May this country become a light unto the nations of hope and goodness and peace and freedom. May violence and darkness be cast out of our midst. May hatred no longer find fertile ground in which to grow here. May all of us feel God's grace upon us. Reignite, dear God, the spirit of truth in our hearts. May our nation be given a new light, the sacred fire that was shown so bright from shore to shore. May we be repaired. May we be forgiven. May we be renewed. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you, remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you so much for this time, for your ministry, for your leadership. I am grateful. God bless. <laughs>